I don't want to watch this. Okay, we have finally reached the overworld in this game. Much like in the last few Final Fantasy games, the overworld is a fully 3D environment where a small character runs around and you go and you find different uh, towns and villages and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, the first part of the overworld we have encountered is deep in this ca in this sort of uh, valley in the mist continent and you notice something there was a heavy mist all over the world here and when I first encountered this I thought this was really just the developers getting kind of lazy with the game because mist and fog and all that kind of stuff was a very common kind of thing back in like the PlayStation 1 era because the game, I mean, the hardware was quite limited at the time. So it, it's not ter terribly surprising for me to say something along the lines of the, game, the hardware couldn't really render a large environment. So games like, like um, Silent Hill in particular was infamous for this. They created this heavy kind of fog which obscures, it, obscures things that are further away from you in order to sort of um, not show the obvious deficiencies of, like, environments popping into existence on the horizon. Reality, that's not actually the case. This is actually has something to do with the plot of the game. Oh, crap. <laughs> what are we going to fight here? Anyway, the... And uh, it's not really a technical issue, because later on in the game, skunks... Later on in the game, we go to an area where there is not mist, and the game is perfectly capable of rendering the environment off the horizon. It doesn't really have any terribly noticeable pop-up. Okay, the aspect of the, the game, as, uh, as far as the game's story goes, comes from the fact that there, a number of times in the game so far, they've talked about the mist as this stuff that we have to uh, you have to be careful of. It's dangerous. Hang around in the mist. What we're talking about is this stuff. This game, the Mist Continent, is shrouded. Uh, it's aptly named. It's shrouded in mist. Stone. Hit him with the stone. Uh, and we went. Where exactly the mist comes from, nobody really knows. But it's pretty clear, looking through the history of this world, that the mist has not always been here. You look around, uh, there are a lot of, like, physical structures and all that kind of stuff built down in the lower areas, like where we are now, where the mist tends to lie. Most of civilization nowadays is built in the higher areas of the world, where the mist isn't quite so uh, prevalent, or the mist doesn't rise high enough to to reach the, your uh, mist doesn't travel high enough to reach like where the towns are and all that kind of stuff. So people tend to live on the higher air, high the highlands basically of the mist continent. But there are, there are well, there aren't any towns or anything left down like in the valleys where we are right now, there are, um, like, this gate right here. Uh, I don't know if I really want to be going in here. I'm gonna do it anyway. Ah, uh, damn it.
the gates exist in the world. Oh shit, hold on. This can this will basically work like a shop, I think. Treasure chest? Is that a treasure chest? Eye drops. Yeah, that was worth it. The gates existed, like, at the borders between the different countries and all that kind of stuff. And it facilitated travel between the two, to, between the multiple countries on the Mist Continent. But traveling by foot beneath the, like, down here in the Mist is considered dangerous. And uh, gameplay-wise, it's not really, not really any more dangerous than being above, aside from the fact that towns and shops are harder to come by. So it's a little bit more dangerous, I guess, but not really. So you gotta be, uh, damn it, what? But, uh, that was mostly, like, a historical, this is actually where I'm supposed to be going. That is mostly a kind of historical way of travel in this world. For the last couple of generations, travel by airship has become more common. So much easier was travel by airship in this world that once airships became a thing and their uh, travel by them became cheap enough and easy enough. It improved everybody's lives quite significantly. That's the other gate. I can't even get to that, I don't think. So let's get out of here. Move on with the story. It improved everybody's lives so dramatically that it essentially ended all the warring and stuff that went on between the different countries. So airship travel, do you think, would have maybe been used primarily for, like, weapons and all that kind of stuff? Pretty much allowed, like, such ease of- Damn it! God damn it! I hate this shit! <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is the airships made life so easy that different nations are no longer fighting over the limited resources that this world had to offer. So you gotta be, uh, damn it, what? But, uh, that was mostly, like, a historical, this is actually where I'm supposed to be going. That is mostly a kind of historical way of travel in this world. For the last couple of generations, travel by airship has become more common. So much easier was travel by airship in this world that once airships became a thing, and their, uh, travel by them became cheap enough and easy enough. It improved everybody's lives quite significantly. That's the other gate. I can't even get to that, I don't think. So let's get out of here. Move on with the story. It improved everybody's lives so dramatically that it essentially ended all the warring and stuff that went on between the different countries. So airship travel, do you think, would have maybe been used primarily for, like, weapons and all that kind of stuff? Pretty much allowed, like, such ease of- Damn it! God damn it! I hate this shit! <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is the airships made life so easy that different nations are no longer fighting over the limited resources that this world had to offer. 